Good day, Minecraftians. Purple Mentat here, bringing you episode 16 of my Clouds of Darkness Let's Play. So, last time, we finally got some flight going in the form of these fairy wings, and I'm wearing this extreme ender armor that we also crafted. This has left us with quite a few quests complete that we still need to actually hand in. But before we go do that, we're going to finish just a couple more. Specifically, I need to make the essence infused tools for one quest, which are made just like this. And I'm going to need to make the, uh, what is it here? Empowered ender tools for another. Unfortunately, those require these ender sticks to make. And I believe I need the hoe for that one as well. So that's two four, six, eight, nine ender sticks that I'm going to need. And I'm sure someone's likely to point out, hey, didn't you have some of those somewhere? I might. I don't remember. Um, there. Yep. It's the empowered ender tools that you need. One, two, three. Boom. Bump. Bump. Boom, boom. And boom. Okay. That's a whole lot of extra tools. Let's, uh... See if we can put some of them together into a little set here. Specifically, the essence infused can all go in one of these. Like so. And we can put most of the empowered ender in one of these as well. It's not perfect by any means, but I kind of like showing them off like this way. There. I'm happy. All right, let's hand in a ton of quests. Okay, so Essence Infused. Collect a reward bag from that. This is a greater bag. And this opens up the Fighting to the Max, where I need to get the... It, I, that looks like the Max Level Essence Infused. Uh, yes. Yes, that was definitely that guy. All right. These are fun because you actually make them out of infused diamonds, blaze rods, which we don't have a good source of yet, and extreme essence. So this one's going to have to wait until we have a little bit more in the way of resource production set up. However, the Mark IV armor we also completed last time, giving us another greater bag, as well as in Survival of the Fittest, every tier of ender armor and we also completed the empowered tools quest which gives us access to the castle of magic whole giant pile of goodies pretty happy about that actually let's toss the castle of magic down in the lower left as it's one of the many castles that we will be visiting also, let's make some more ender fruits because I have plenty of bowls hanging around somewhere. Don't I? Yes, there they are. And now that I have the... I swear I had uh, ender nuggets somewhere. Let's see if that's still the case. Oh, I already grabbed them all. Excellent. So, I'm going to need just an awful lot of ender nuggets. And still more. <laughs> but now we have just about a full stack of ender fruit. That's going to... Uh, you know what? Let's make two more. It's going to take 14 more nuggets. And it'll use up the last of the bowls that we have. That'll be good. Uh, no, not like that. Ender blocks are not used for much. If you're looking to pick up all of a thing, well, up to a stack of it anyway, you can double click that thing and grab it really quick. There we have it. Now I've got plenty of really cool healing supplies. Got a couple of very lucky blocks. We have a legendary reward bag, a diamond saw. That's nice. We're going to grab the diamond saw and get rid of that stone saw we made. We're gonna, going to take the very lucky blocks over to the Village of the Damned, prepare for... Oh, you know what? We're going to sleep through the night before we go to the village, just in case. Doot, 
So off to the village of the damned. And get a little bit of room away from the ridiculous amount of pets that I seem to have acquired over time. Get those lucky blocks down. We'll open those up first. Well, that was a fair bit of experience gone to waste. Since I ran away from uh, the potion explosion. And... Buckets. Lots of buckets. Interesting. Okay. Back home. We have two good bags containing 32 seared brick and a troll block. Blast. Uh, three greater reward bags. Ooh. 264k storage cells. Neat. Bunch of ender pearls and a couple ender generators. And Eris's Rage. This is a rather cool weapon from the Atom mod. It's very, um, huge knockback attached to it. We will put that into the reward wall. Maybe. There we go. Right up there with the Minotaur's. Uh... Minotaur's Axe. Yes. Mino Shroom's Axe? I'm not certain. I don't really have a use for these random liquids. Hmm. Well, I can get rid of them easily enough. And just extract the buckets. That was weird. Yeah, apparently I can put a bucket on of one liquid on top of a bucket of another and it will just displace it. Interesting. That brings me up to a total of 11 buckets, which is probably 11 more than I really need at this point. But we'll hang on to them anyway. A little bit of inventory sorting. Quest cleanup today. Wow, I'm out of room for seared bricks. Imagine that. We'll hang on to the concrete. Build myself an industrial area sometime soon. Oh, uh, where is it? There you go. Red heart canister there. Fantastical. And ender generators. And we'll put it in the bag as well as the as part of the someday an industrial area. That's a good idea. I like that plan. Legendary reward bag. Gets me a super awesome potion. Sigh. I mean, that is a really awesome potion. Magical potion for magical crops. Hmm. Unfortunately, oh, you can be made. That might be worth it. It's a one minute version, though. This is a 15 minute version. That's kind of cool. Toss that, toss that away for now, though. Now. You may have noticed that I am not dealing with the lag issues that I have been. I've been running around doing a bunch of stuff and not running into them. Well, after experimenting, pulling a bunch of mods out and putting them back in and playing around with it a bunch, I am fairly certain that it was indeed Opus that was causing the issue, and therefore Opus has been removed. That is also why there is no minimap in the upper right hand corner. I'm going to be replacing the mini-map with journey map, and in fact, I thought I already installed that, but I must not have gotten it into the mod folder. So, I do recommend that you go in and disable Opus, and then replace it with the mini-map of your choice, as it seems to have greatly improved performance on my end. Hopefully, this is something that will be corrected at some point. I do not know if the problem is in Opus, or if it is on the part of another mod interacting with Opus, but... The problem's there, and the solution that I have found is to disable Opus for the time being. One other thing that I have added. You know, I have a serious problem with particle effects. I eat some ender fruit, and you may notice that... Wow. I did another one. I don't have particle effects in my face. Well, that's because of a mod that I found called Clean View. I hit the button associated with it, I now have particle effects in my face again. If I hit the button associated with it, the particle effects in my face go away. Without affecting any other particles in the world from the looks of it. You can... Whoops. Wrong button. You can customize which button it is going to be. 
under the miscellaneous. Clean View is the name of the mod, and I'm going to be including a link to the mod in the down below. So if you hate particle effects in your face, go install Clean View because it lets you use various potion abilities without being permanently stuck with little floaty swirls in front of you. Hmm. Don't know what's causing that to be a different color. That's a little odd. Why is that happening? Like some sort of flickering light issue. I don't know if it's caused by clean view or not. Oh, you know what it's caused by? It's because I have, uh, I had night vision. That's what was happening. Ah, uh, don't mind me being silly. Okay, so next on the quest list, I really need to get a good source of blaze rods. And I am exactly one blaze rod short of being able to build blaze seeds. So I need to find some, basically. Hopefully I'll find some tomorrow when I do the live stream event for the labyrinth. But you may notice that having completed the survival of the fittest category, or no, the challenges of the beings category to get the weapons. Was it the weapons? Actually, it was survival of the fittest to get the empowered tools unlocks one quest elsewhere. And also gave me that castle of the magic. I now have access to the home of the beings in the castle of magic. I can go and kill myself a few mutant monsters and get access to the castle of ores. There's a whole bunch of other good stuff available there too. So we're definitely going to be going on some adventures in the upcoming episodes. However, right now, I would really like to continue progressing on the Twilight Forest. But, yeah, yeah, let's go straight for that. Uh, I'm short the one blaze rod before I can make the blaze seeds. So yes, we are going to head back to the Twilight Island. And we're going to go through the portal, and we're going to go kill that Hydra that we've already found. Fortunately, using this armor, I don't have step up. So I'm going to make some plans to make some more fun armor in the very near future. Gotta love how much faster everything's running now that I'm not dealing with those issues. Oh. Oh. Huh. That's interesting. There should be a giant snowstorm from Twilight Forest. I think that clean view is affecting that. Because I am... I should be beginning frozen. Or maybe... The only reason there's not a giant snowstorm is it's not raining. In any case, munch some ender fruit so we can easily run through the place with the extra speed buff. And get our map back out so we can make sure we're headed for the Hydra. Okay, I'll be back when we're outside the Hydra's lair so that you can join me for the fight. See you soon. Alrighty, folks, we are back. As you can see, the Hydra layer is just ahead of us. Oh, what's that? What are you? Huh, plume of smoke. Neat. Oh, right, this will be a fire swamp, won't it? Yes, it will. Alrighty. Fun times. So, we're going to avoid using flight besides a tool to get around a bit in the Twilight Forest. Because the game, well, the mod is really built on the idea that you don't have flight. So if you're using it to go everywhere, then you're going to end up... Well, I mean, if you're using it to solve some of the challenges, then you're going to end up kind of breaking the progression. After all, there is no way to obtain creative flight. Yes, I hear you, Hydra. I just don't see you yet. There we go. There you are. Bring it on. Come on. Oh, wow. You're angry. Hello. I don't know why I'm getting a zombie assault as well. Ow! Just cut that out. 
I wish I could actually chop its heads off. That would be amazing, but that's okay. We're just gonna get right up underneath it and stab it to death with this really good sword. This monster is usually best fought at range when you don't have this kind of ridiculous uh, gear set up. At this point, though, it's really just a let me whack all the way through this HP sack. It is entirely possible to beat this creature with vanilla weapons and armor because you can knock back the those the balls of explosives that they throw out and you can easily avoid the fire by staying back with a bow and arrow. I do recommend something with some power on it though if you're going to use a standard ranged weapon. Hello. Ah, uh, baby zombie got set on fire. Ow. Ring of wealth shines brightly. Come on, Hydra. It's time to be dead and give me your trophy and then let me loot your tower. Or your cave. Hydra Slayer, get. That's a lot of explosion. Alright, there's a skeleton here that's gotta die. Along with a handful of other monsters. There you go. And... There we are. Hydra drops... Fiery Blood, and Hydra Chops. Wow, these are a large meal to begin with. That's actually kind of cool. I wonder if they give a buff for eat. Well, I won't know because I can't know. Uh, fiery Blood is used to make Fiery Ingots, which again will get you some decent enchanted armor, which I believe the Fiery Aura enchant is something that is special to Twilight Forest. You can also make an auto-smelting pickaxe using it and some bla uh, blaze rods. And... A fire aspect to sword so decent stuff I think the only th that's the only thing I can do yes it is excellent hydro chops do not craft to and craft into anything and of course another miniature yellow heart well it's an emerald from somewhere might have that might have been what the ring of wealth gave me all right let's munch this for some night vision so we can eat more easily explore over here the hydra hill is basically an ore hill that has been partially hollowed out so you can always find a large amount of redstone ore um a fair bit of others like iron there's a gold pillar here's another here's a coal stalactite and i'm pretty sure there's some diamond in here somewhere if you look around enough hmm I see some lapis but yeah so if if you're in need of resources Tracking down a Hydra can be an option. Wow. Okay, that, that's just never going to burn out, maybe? It is a fire swamp, after all. Oh, look at that! Huh, there's some sky stone in here. I gotta get some better night vision potions, but... That's definitely on the list. I just want to get myself some... I, I need more blaze rods first, because you need a blaze rod to make that brewing, brewing station, you know? Alright, so, if you take a look at your achievements and then cycle through to find Twilight Forest, you can see that once you've done the Hydra and of one blood, it is time to go to the Dark Forest Ruins and use a trophy on the pedestal to access the next stage of the mod. So let's take a look at our map and see if we can find a dark forest nearby. Hmm. I'm certainly not seeing one yet. I'm going to fly around some and do some searching and see if I can find the next part of Twilight Forest progression. This is definitely the sort of thing that is speeding things along more than uh, you would be able to normally. It would normally take quite a bit longer to explore than this. But, this is also the sort of thing that I don't mind, because this is just making it take less time to accomplish the same thing, as opposed to completely invalidating a challenge. Like, you can easily make this exploration happen, it'll just be a lot slower doing it manually, as opposed to flying around. In any case, I shall return once I find myself the proper biome. See you then. Alrighty, folks. Finally, after filling in a good bit of the map, 
and going back to base for a few more supplies, you can see in front of me the Dark Forest. Aptly named. We're going to need to make a few things to be able to easily handle our time in there. For one, I've grabbed myself a whole bunch more vials of ordinary water. You remember these from the reliquary potion making. You just make the vials out of panes of glass so that I can make condensed solvents. And I have an awful lot of carrots, which I'm going to turn into golden carrots. Like so. Because a golden carrot with a condensed solvent and a bit of redstone will create a three minute infravision potion, which is effectively night vision. Which is awesome. It's the best we can do right now. And with clear view, we don't even have to deal with the annoying potion effects. So three minutes at a time, we can see. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to combine nine ender pearls with nine paper to create nine unbound warp pages. And I'm going to use one of those when we actually find the area that we're looking for. There we go. Now we can see just fine for the next three minutes. We're going to follow our map south with a bit of east through the trees until we find the stronghold. Now, another option that you have is to use some sort of tool with zero durability issues. For example, the Extreme Mender Pickaxe and vein mine the leaves in here. And in fact, you could do that with the canopy leaves as well. It'll just take quite a bit more time to break through the first one. Oh boy, that took all of the food. But you can, in fact, eventually get through to the sky. But as you can see, the leaves are quite thick. It's probably not worth the amount of food you're going to need to spend to do that. Because, I mean, I'm already chewing through my hydro chops working on that. Did get a lot of darkwood saplings, so that's fun. <laughs> if you were to use something like your hatchet or your mattock, it'd go a lot faster, but you're going to be spending... Yeah, that's just not worth it. You're better off with the uh, infravision potions than trying to clear through that canopy. It's ridiculous. Hello. That was terrifying. You're gargantuan and nasty and... There. Death. Death to the skeletal druids riding on spiders. That's not okay. Ah, what? No, stop it. I don't know what just hit me, but it infected me with blindness. I now have night vision and blindness. That was weird. Like a werewolf or something? Mist wolf. Okay. I haven't explored the dark forest much. The last time I played this, you did not need to come into one of these to... Well, it was before the progression update for the Twilight Forest. And the Twilight Forest progression update is amazing. Definitely changes things. Never can have too many raven's feathers. Hello, little bunny rabbit. You are in a bad, bad place. All these trees in the way. It's hard to see. Like, shouldn't I be able to see the stronghold by now? It says I'm just about right on top of it. But I just don't see it anywhere. Too many trees. Too many leaves. Oh no. We're gonna put the mattock back so that we can... Get through that in a reasonable amount of time. Well, that broke it, didn't it? Huh. <laughs> that was a lot more dark wood attached to that tree than I thought there was. Wow. Oh, oh. Here, maybe. This looks promising. Um. Something tells me that something isn't working quite right. Hello. Latent Trophy Pedestal. There we go. All right, we're going to take our spare Naga Trophy, put that on top here. All right. 
that drops you through the floor into a death chamber of creepers and nastiness. So, uh, come prepared. <laughs> that was fun. Let's see what this place has to offer. Oh, hey. Free anvil. Yay! Alright, so I am going through this place effectively blind. I've never done this dungeon before, and I have no idea what the mechanics are here. But, I get the feeling that, like, down is the way to go. Ooh, look at you. You've got, you've got a bunch of lava. Let's be real careful around here. Um, ooh, yeah, that's an interesting little terrain feature there. We're gonna... I'm still committed to attempting to do this, like, as you would need to do it if you did not have a flight ring. Because not everyone's going to when they get to this point. I don't know if I'm supposed to be able to cut through these quite as easily as I am, but you could have a maze breaker by now which can cut through anything as easily as this ender pickaxe can. I don't think I'm going to be keeping any of this under brick. Ooh, that's weird. How low am I? Y equals 8. Yeah, that's close enough to get void fog. Um, mossy under brick can only be used to make facades. Cracked under brick is the same. Yes, goodbye under brick. You are not fancy enough for me to care. And, you know what, we'll get rid of the apples as well. Oop, hello. I know you. I have met your kind before. Time for another swig of... Night Vision Potion, or Infra Vision Potion, I am sorry. Okay. Hello. Helmet crabs, huh? That's neat. Like... Neat enough that I kind of want to light this area up instead of destroying it. What do they drop? They drop armor shards. Which can make armor shard clusters. Which can make night metal ingots. Which can make nightly plate. Nightly greaves. Ooh. I can make a nightly pick. It looks like a scythe and does extra damage to armored targets. I see, it's your old style military pick. That's pretty cool. You know what, I might actually uh, make myself a little farm just so that I can have the knightly stuff because it looks neat. Oh, hello. There we go. Got a couple of chests in here. Steel, leaf, iron, wood. Looks like the standard stuff. Diamond sword. I kind of have to take the- ow, ow. Cut that out, would you? There, that should block off all of the potential spawn points. <laughs> should. Some of the stuff tucked away where it can't do any damage. Because I do want to... Well, I want the diamond sword. Yeah, that'll do. Okay, that was a neat little dead end. Shame that night vision interferes with... F7 working. Or maybe... Hello? I hear you. Maybe it was Clearview interfering with F7. Nope. Or maybe it's just down here it doesn't work. Continuing to follow the right-hand wall. As that is my way through most of these places. We are quite likely to need to continue this in another episode. I doubt I'm going to have time to get through the whole thing in one go. So we are running short on time. Oh, hello, zombie. Oh, why did that happen? Stop that. Right now. Bad zombie. Ooh, hello. There's some goblin knights. Oh, they're... One down. 
No! Bad creeper. Wow. That one, like, I cut it in half and it kept coming. I'm glad I have really good armor. I'm really glad I have really good armor. Wow! I cut it in half the other way and it still kept coming. These things are monstrous. They don't die. That one gives darkness and is annoying as heck. There we go. Down you go. Did it just drop? It dropped five adamant bars. Neat. All kinds of good stuff coming out of here. I should start marking where I've been with the staff. Just a little. More armor shard. Ooh, maze wafers. Nice. Good to know I won't accidentally starve while I'm here. Uh, you go away. You go away. You be very, very sad that I'm out of inventory space. Excellent. Why am I not eating? Oh, because those things are gargantuan. Right. Okay, folks. It looks like we are... Ooh, don't do that. It looks like we have gone past our target 30-minute window. I will be back tomorrow to continue exploring through this area. We'll see what we can see, and then probably end up in the Urgast Tower almost immediately after that. Unless we happen to find a bit of... Ooh, hee hee hee. That is a terrifying noise. Okay, then. I think we have found some sort of important area, because now we're actually getting a bunch of those knights spawning. So, we're gonna make a mark right here. That's our next goal. We're going up this staircase. And we're gonna do so by holding onto this unbound warp page and right-clicking uh, Knight Castle Stairs. There we are. Now I can put that into my warp book and I'll be able to come back to the Knight Castle Stairs next time. So, hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you have, please leave a like. Let me know what I did well. If you have not, please leave a dislike and let me know what I can do better. Consider subscribing, and I will see you next time.